The World Health Organization has declared monkeypox a global emergency. Now companies like Illumina have turned their sights at defining therapeutics and vaccines uh, to fight the outbreak. Joining us now, Francis D'Souza is the CEO of the genetic uh, sequencing company Illumina. What was uh, your me mechanical engineering? What, what number was that uh, at, in Kendall Square in Cambridge, Francis? What, what were your two t together? Course six, uh, electrical engineering and computer science. Electrical engineering and computer science. Suddenly, that's big in biotech. If you don't have that, you might have, you know, molecular biology, I don't even need that. I need what you have uh, to run one of these companies, obviously, especially a sequencing uh, company must come in handy. Uh, if we sequence monkeypox, what's that do for us? Yeah, what we do uh, when we sequence monkeypox is because we understand the, uh, the, the, the genome of the virus. So that tells us how the virus is emerging, how it's moving around the world, how it's mutating. That information is essential for us to develop things like the diagnostic tools uh, to develop vaccines like we did for COVID, but also to develop the antivirals. And so what we can do with a global pathogen surveillance system is get a very early advance warning of an outbreak that's happening track as it's moving so we can use that to make uh, policy decisions, for example. Uh, and then we can make sure that as the virus mutates, that the tools we're using to fight the outbreak, the diagnostic tools, the therapeutics, the vaccines, that the virus hasn't escaped them. And so it's important to continue to monitor it. Now, this is important not just from a public health perspective to look for the next coronavirus or the next uh, monkeypox, but it's also important from a national defense perspective. It helps us identify, for example, any bioterrorist attacks that may be playing out. So we've got, would you say there's three areas you'd, you'd like diagnostic? We'd like to be able to, to, do, to have really rapid tests for that. We'd like to have a, a, a vaccine, I guess, and we'd like to have a therapeutic. And sequencing it, once you sequence it, it, it still seems like the next step to trying designing drugs is, is not uh, automatic. You don't know what, once you have the, the raw sequence, you don't know what codes for genes, what doesn't, what's important, what's not. Uh, so there's more work to be done, right? Yeah, the, the, what sequencing gives you is it's the first step in the process. So what it allows you to do is be looking globally to see if there's an outbreak happening. If it's an outbreak of something we know already, or it could be a novel outbreak that's happening, and then you take that genomic data, because we digitize the biology, and we give that genomic data to the companies that then create the vaccines or the therapeutics or the diagnostic tools, and then we continue to feed that data to those companies to make sure that the tools they have continue to work. We also feed that data into the public health systems so that we can understand what kind of policy decisions we could make. Should we enact a travel ban, for example, so that we can contain a virus? Now, if in your community you see that the only outbreaks are, are coming from the outside, and you know that by looking at the at the genome of the virus in your community, well, then a travel ban could be helpful because you could contain it from coming into your community. But right. if you're already starting to see local transmission, and again, you can see that by looking at the sequences of the virus, well, at that point, a travel ban won't be helpful, and you need to move on to, to other measures. And so uh, sequence data also helps you identify what are the kind of policy decisions you need to be making. Hey, Francis, uh, some very sort of just news you can use selfishly for all the viewers out there. Who should be getting the vaccine? Uh, at this point, people who are at high-risk communities. And so over time, I think we need to be much broader in terms of the rollout of the vaccines, but we should be targeting communities today that are at higher risk of transmission. And so those are the people that I think should be prioritized for getting the vaccine. Again, this is monkeypox is a disease that can affect all of us, and so we need to know that. But in terms of the rollout, we need to identify who are the higher risk communities, just like we did with COVID, and start with the rollout in those communities.